Welcome painters! I hope you are willing to learn some new skills because today we start a new series of videos about airbrushing. I often get asked about which compressors to buy, airbrush, paint dilution, and some other related questions. And today, we start the airbrush adventure, so pay close attention. Let's begin! As you can see on the table, there are a lot of products, and I will explain everything about them all in a new series of videos. Today I will explain which airbrush and compressor to buy. And we start with the engine, the compressor. Without this, our airbrush cannot work because it works by using compressed air. Here comes the million dollar question. Hey Angel, which compressor should I buy? If you paint as a hobby, meaning you paint a few hours a week or when you have some spare time on the weekend, I would recommend you get a mid-range compressor. This one works quite well. It's crucial to buy one with an air pressure gauge. We will use it to adjust the compressor pressure. I usually set it to 1.8 or 2 bar. This one has a 3 liter tank. These kind of compressors are the best choice for hobby painters. About the noise it makes. This one makes some noise while repressurizing the tank and then shuts off, but it is reasonably acceptable. Here is another compressor. This one high quality or professional. I use this one daily. Is it recommended for you? Why not? If you are going to work with it a lot or use it every day, I recommend you use this one. This one has five to six liters capacity and it requires routine maintenance. The oil should be changed. Here it is, the air pressure gauge, and it is very quiet. It just makes a bit of noise while repressurizing the tank. I will recommend this kind of compressor if you'll use it a lot. And finally, the piston or membrane type compressors. This banger. It is the cheapest, but I do not recommend using them at all because it is not possible to set the air pressure and this is crucial for us. You don't want to be a cheapskate. This one is the cheapest, but it is a mess working with it. I suggest you rather invest a little more money to get an intermediate range one. And then if you're using it a lot, buy a professional one. So these are the three types of compressors you can buy. There are a great variety of compressors on the market, but these are the most common types. I would recommend an intermediate range one if you are new to the hobby, and never buy the piston one because you will despair while using it. And then if you use it a lot, a professional one and never get the cheapest model. Now the most difficult question, which airbrush should I buy? If you are a beginner, you might be thinking, which one should I get, the cheaper one or the more expensive? If I'm just starting, I'm sure I'll break it. Surely a cheap one and an expensive one are the same. I get asked many questions about this daily, so I will try to answer all of them now. Talking from experience as a professional miniature painter for more than 16 years, from my point of view, it is better to get an expensive airbrush. A cheap <sighs> airbrush, I do not recommend it at all, since you are going to go crazy because you are going to buy it with all your enthusiasm of being your first airbrush. You're going to connect it, you're going to paint, and you will get a disaster. Because it is not as precise in comparison to a good one. I recommend Harder and Steenbeck. I've been using them for many years, and for me they are the best airbrushes on the market. 
The range of airbrushes is divided into two types of airbrush, intermediate range and mega pro. Let's talk about them. Here are the intermediate range airbrushes from Harder and Steenbeck, the Evolution range, the Evolution Silverline, CR Plus, and AL Plus. There are more Evolution models available, but here you can see the three types. In this range, the needle is 0.2 millimeters. This is the best choice if you are just starting the hobby, as the price is about 120 to 130 euros depending on the model. Silverline is available in different versions. This one is one of the first airbrushes the company produced and it works quite well. A bit heavy, but it's a good option. Here you have the CR Plus. The previous one is the Evolution, the standard one. Almost everyone has that airbrush. It improves on the previous one with a better trigger. The next one is Evolution AL Plus. What is the difference between AL Plus and CR Plus? The AL Plus is made of aluminum, weighs very little, and that's the only difference with the CR Plus. Now I will show you the Harder and Steenbeck flagship airbrush, the Infinity. Here you can see the Infinity CR Plus. It is the Ferrari of the airbrush world. The old model is called Infinity, and the new one is the CR Plus, which includes some improvements. What improvements? Especially the trigger, which is more precise. It has the thinnest needle on the market, 0.15 millimeters. It makes super thin strokes. It can be used with some other nozzles, like 0.2 or 0.4 millimeter. I normally work with 0.15 millimeter because that way I get super thin strokes and as I paint 28 millimeter figures, it fits perfectly. But we can also achieve great results with size 0.2 and 0.4. Another advantage of the Infinity range is the quick fix system, which allows us to set the needle movement level. Just press the button and adjust the movement level. We can turn it down and the needle movement level will be smaller. We can turn it up and the needle movement level will be bigger. If you have any doubts about buying a cheap one rather than an expensive one, do not be afraid. What happens if we damage the airbrush? This is not normal, but you can damage the needle which is very thin and the nozzle. Those two pieces together cost 20 or 25 euros. Rarely will any other piece get damaged. If you use it a lot, the needle spring may wear out, but that would take ages. My advice is buying an intermediate one such as the Evolution or the flagship, which is the Infinity. The cheap airbrushes are very poor quality and it will not help you paint. Right now, let's talk about the hoses. There are plenty of types of them. There are braided, clear PVC, plastic, there are a lot of them. But the most important thing is the connectors. These are the quick connects, which are very easy to use. You just need this part and it connects so fast. And to remove it, it's amazing. I recommend the quick connects. There are also the screw connects, which must be screwed on. Imagine if you have to use two airbrushes and you want to change the one you are using, then you have to screw it off and air pressure will be released out of the hose. So the best option is the quick connect. We connect it, we disconnect it, and the air pressure remains inside. There are a lot of airbrush hoses. It is up to you which one to use, but the connector type should always be a quick connect one. 
Airbrush stands, there are a lot of them on the market. Here I have two examples. A cleaning station, which is so good. Imagine there is paint inside the cup. Just rest it, press the trigger, and remove all the remaining paint from it. It also has a filter, so it's going to protect you from all the particles it releases. And the standard stand. Simply rest the airbrush. Very useful. It's up to you. If you paint in a poorly ventilated space, my advice is using a cleaning station because it will protect you from all the particles. If you want to live dangerously, use a standard stand. Cleaning kit. Here you have this magical machine. Ultrasonic, super easy to use. Just open it up, put all the airbrush pieces inside, cover them with cleaner and turn it on. On future videos, I will explain how it works and how to properly clean your airbrush. There is also a cleaning kit, which includes a towel to put the airbrush on and includes a lot of small tools. The cleaning brushes, which fit perfectly in the airbrush and remove all of the dried paint. The nozzle cleaning tool, which is inserted into the nozzle and by turning it, we remove all the paint. I will record a video about how to clean the airbrush. This is just a preview. Another very interesting product when using an airbrush is the cleaner. That will come in handy when cleaning our airbrush. Once we finish painting with the airbrush, it is advisable to clean it properly. And the cleaner is perfect for it. Never use alcohol. The alcohol could damage the airbrush seals. Another product is the thinner, which we use to thin the paint down. You can also use water, and if it is the Spanish water, much, much better. The Spanish water. And finally, the airbrush station. Some of you do not have a lot of space at home, so something like this would be a good option to get everything organized. This one has a turntable base, which is useful to paint vehicles, because we can put our vehicle on it and turn it while painting. It also includes a drawer for tools. If you paint your miniatures before assembly, you can use the holes for clip holders. It includes an airbrush holder as well. It could be useful to get an airbrush station if you are just starting out. It will help you get all organized. I hope this video will help you get started in the airbrush world. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments. In the next video, I will show you how to use the airbrush, dilution, and some useful exercises. It's going to be a very interesting video, so I encourage you to watch it. And last but not least, if you want to support such a cool YouTube channel, share the video with your friends. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell! Remember, on my website, you can buy my books to learn a bit more about airbrushing and other skills. And don't forget to click on the video description to see the list of products I use. If you live in Spain, you can get all the products I use at the shop Goblin Trader. In France, you can get them all at the shop Hobby Store. See you in the next video!